Hello Nigeria, hello Africa. You're watching Plus TV Africa and the program is Sports Business with Orufo Ezaga. Today we promise you yet another exciting package. I say that always, don't I? But we always deliver. Today we're going to be talking about sports business as usual. And as usual again, our focus is going to be on the domestic sports industry. Today we're taking a break from, you know, the popular um, subjects, football, basketball. Today we're going to be talking about a different um, sport entirely. It's been there all of this while. It's been operating in the background, so to speak, but it's still a very popular sport, not just in Nigeria, but across Africa and the rest of the world. Today I'm talking about handball. And we're going to be looking at handball, um, the status of the game in Nigeria, and what commercial prospects there are for the sport going forward. Is this still a popular sport in Nigeria? Is this still a popular sport around the world? Who plays handball in Nigeria? And you know, um, what is the future going to be like for this sport? In the studio with me today is the man who should know everything there is to know for two reasons. One, he is the president of the Handball Federation of Nigeria. And two, he's a senior banker. He's actually um, the GM and head of global markets, Stambik IBTC uh, Nigeria. Now, so he's going to be talking to us about the game, the sport of handball, and he's going to also be looking at it from the point of view of the very same people we go to meet for sponsorships, you know, and so he's going to be talking from two sides and he's going to be looking at the sport and he's going to be looking at the business. All right. I'm talking about Mr. Samuel Ocheho. We are going to go on a short break, as is the is nature of the program, so that you can really uh, prepare yourself for what is to come. We're talking about 45 to 50 minutes of really exciting and insightful stuff from Mr. Sami Ocheho, right? And what he's going to say is something you want to, want to listen to, because it could open an idea or two for you or your colleagues or company um, in the sports industry. So give us a short, a short moment, don't go away, and when we return, the business begins. Welcome back to the program Sports Business with Uru for Izaga. Today we're talking handball. And in the studio with me is the president of the Nigeria, the Handball Federation of Nigeria, Mr. Samuel Ocheho. Um, he's also a senior banker, like I said earlier, he's the GM uh, and head global market of Stambik IBTC Nigeria. Welcome to the program, um, mm -hmm. Sa Samuel? Samuel, Sam, anyone. Sam, yeah. because you have that. <laughs> Oh, so it's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. Ken. I'll tell you why I'm excited, right? Um, a while ago, maybe like a year plus, I, I was in the car and, and then you were on radio talking about handball, you know, and I got excited, you know, by what you were saying that, look, I, I played handball in secondary school all of those years ago, you know, and I was surprised that people still played handball in Nigeria. <laughs> and even more surprising was the passion with which you were speaking about the game in Nigeria, you know, and you're talking about the league, if I remember rightly. All right. So what, what's it like for handball? What, what, you know, what's going on? People think we're a one, one sport con country, you know, football. But how is it, how is it going with, with your sport in the country? Well, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Mm. And uh, thank you for also for the opportunity to talk about handball. Mm. Uh, like you rightly said, handball is something I love with passion. And so whenever I talk about it, I talk about it with utmost passion. Mm. Um, yes, I, I, I don't blame you if uh, or the general Nigerian community, mm. if people think it's just about one sport. Uh, that is the way we've sold it uh, as a country. Mm. That's where we've really truly invested in as a country uh, at the detriment of uh, other sport. Mm. But handball has been growing in popularity uh, since our board took over. We've done our best to make sure it grows, to make sure it becomes more popular. If you recall, sometimes in the 80s, handball was the second most popular team sport in the country. Mm. But over the years, we lost it and uh, we're trying to regain that status again and uh, steadily we are moving forward steadily we are doing the right thing steadily we are putting structures in place and we hope that we'll get there very soon okay part of the problem here is this 
um, you have eight years to do whatever it is that you want to do. Eight years is a pretty short time, you know, when you want to turn around things and then ensure sustainability, all right? But that's what we have, right? And um, this is your second term, is it? So you have just about how many, uh, a year or so? A year. year. So how far have you come in the seven years that you've been there, yeah. would you say? Trust me, we've come very far. Mm. Uh, we've done a lot to popularize the game. Mm. Uh, like you said, eight years. I don't know. I don't think it's that long. Mm. But the general belief in Nigeria is that if you cannot do anything in eight years, you can never do it again. Mm. And uh, I think that's one erroneous belief we all yeah. have. But it is okay if that's what... Uh, we think of. I mean, if you look at other developed climate, mm. they probably, as long as you're doing the right things, they keep yeah. you there yeah. to continue yeah. doing what you're doing. But here, everybody is interested in that same position, mm. whether for the right reasons or the wrong reasons. Everybody mm. just, it's always about our turn. Mm. Uh, everybody wants to get, gra grab his own uh, position. But it is good. That's what we have, and that's what we have to live with. Uh, since we took over in 2017, I mean, what we've done is we've tried to popularize grassroots handball again. We've tried to ensure that we had it steady league. I think we remain one of the few sports who have had a steady league since uh, 2018 when we started the league again. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had a title sponsor all through the time. Uh, the title sponsor expires next year. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know what next steps are yet, but I mean, Sometime next year, we're going to start having those discussions again. We've had other sponsors, including state government, trying to help our grassroots um, uh, handball. Yeah. Uh, that's where it's been. We've tried to do a lot of things to make it commercially viable, uh, including live streaming our league matches, okay. including doing, I mean, all our social media handles are now active. You know, there was a time somebody made a comment on a platform I belong to. When we just took over, and that comment, I actually he he held it so I uh, And that's Colin Udo. Mm. I've never mentioned it anyway. He never mm. knew, knew that I even... I was on that platform, and mm. he, he was asking a question around, please, does anyone know anything about Anboard? They don't seem to have good online presence. Mm. And that was just a nugget for me. Okay. Uh, and I held that. So I, one of the things I did was, I think I tried my best to make sure at least we developed our online presence. Mm. We're not where we ought to be ought yet, to be. but it's still taking steps to, in the right direction to make sure we popularize the game in Nigeria here, get people to know more, more about it. Uh, if I remember, one of the mandates I had then, or I told myself was, I would love to be driving from Lagos to Kogi State and see kids playing handball mm. on the streets of Nigeria. Mm. That we've not achieved as much as we should achieve, but I think we've gone uh, leaps and bounds from where we started. That's great to hear. Yeah. You, you know, you were talking about the league, you know, and I'm particularly interested in that part of it. You know, to run a league is not is not easy business. You know, you need a lot of money to do that. Yeah. Um, so, how would you say? you know, corporate Nigeria has responded to you guys because, look, government can, clearly can do everything, yeah? And um, speaking f from where I sit, one of the problems I have is that um, I, I do not believe, that's my personal view, that corporate Nigeria has seen the importance of, of sports. And, you know, when, when you discuss this with people, they tell you, oh, um, uh, you know, corporate Nigeria is looking for eyeballs. They're looking for, you know, and then sometimes you wonder. I, I say to, so I had a, somebody on the program who said they were sponsoring a football team in Nigeria because there was restiveness in the East and, and they thought maybe if we put in some money in, 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 in um, this club and the club shines again, it would help young people refocus on, you know. So I'm thinking you're a corporate guy. You know, um, what sort of support have you received and um, what's your opinion about whether corporate Nigeria should support to take sports where it, should, it, 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 it ought to be in this country? Um, to be very honest, um, I don't think uh, corporate Nigeria has done much or as much as they could do mm. for, the, for sport. Mm. Not because they are not interested, Mm. But I guess because the actors themselves, mm. we've scored our own own goals. Yeah. <laughs> yes. um, 
a lot of us have not been very transparent with the monies provided yeah. by sponsors. Our houses are always divided. People mm -hmm. are always fighting against themselves. Mm -hmm. No corporate Nigeria want to invest in, a, in an a uncertain environment, environment yeah. or a, an environment that is very uh, scattered and disjointed. You always hear of one fight or the other in fighting, everything, all this happening within our sport. It has not helped. The issue around transparency has also not helped. When you go to some event that has sponsors, the kind of publicity you are giving to the sponsor looks very minimal. Mm. People do not look at that area mm. very well. We only think of, oh, the collecting. prize money, collecting mm. what we can do to organize. But every corporate sponsor wants to get mileage. They want to get the visibility out of whatever they are putting their money in. Even if they are your friends, mm. they still want to get mileage mm. from whatever they are doing. And if they are not getting that, then it becomes very difficult. And again, when we go to the media fighting over money, sponsor money, the sponsor is watching and mm. clearly thinking, oh, I don't think these guys are using my money very well. So for me, I think um, we've uh, scored on goals against ourselves, which is really affecting us. But again, the sport business is a very big business. Mm. I mean, we can see how it's done in Europe. We can see how it's done in the Americas. Mm. Mm. We can see even how it's done in the North African countries. There are loads of investment into sport, even uh, South Africa. Loads of investment into sport. These uh, corporates, they understand the benefit of what sport can offer. Mm. These guys are pumping loads of money into it because they are getting something back. So we must put ourselves in that position where the corporate world can see sincere benefit. It's not just talking about tax, 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 mm. tax. Mm. They really want to see that this money we are putting into this business mm. is actually going to where it's meant to go, is actually giving us the mileage in a positive manner. Mm. Not <laughs> people who are always bickering and fighting over uh, sponsor money. Okay, so we're going to come back to, you know, the, the value, the the the. the full value picture of what an organization gets by sponsoring sports. But yes, I, I do agree with you that there's a lot of, there's, the federations have not done very well for themselves in terms of the credibility gaps that, that exist and the opaque ways that these things are, are, these federations are run. But in your case, for instance, you've been there for a long time. You've had a, a very uh, sort of like, um, steady relationship with um, Adova, I think, yeah? So they have stayed in spite of the problems. They have stayed, you know? So why do you think, why do you think that is the case? And do you honestly feel that um, whatever the reason they're staying, they can extend beyond your tenure? Well, uh, I, I wouldn't commit to that because I don't know. Yeah. Um, the chairman chief, I mean, the chairman of Adova has said in so many fora mm. uh, that he's actually investing in Humble because of the trust he has in the leadership. Okay. I hope that that trust will be able to pass on to whoever uh, takes over from me. But they've had trust that their monies are well spent. Uh, when they attend this program, they can see the visibility they get. You know, once upon a time, if you, before, the first name was Prudent, right? It mm. was Prudent Energy. If you had Googled them then, everything you see about Prudent was like handball, handball. Mm. So handball like took over a lot of uh, the visibility as opposed to their core business. Mm. But I think they've tried to do some things now which has shown that their core business is coming up on, on the line. They also have worked on their media stuff and they beginning to get more visible. Are, are they still doing stuff with you at all? Yeah, I mean, Prudent actually transitioned into Adova. Oh, really? Right? So they've been together with us from the beginning till oh, now. Oh, okay. So okay. now they want to put Adova as the, uh, how do I put that, in the forefront mm. of their business. They just had the business transformation process, mm. yeah. and they're now pushing more of Adova mm. uh, than Prudent. Prudent is now like the group company, mm. you know. So that is uh, what is happening, which is why they changed the name of the sponsor from Prudent Energy to, to, to uh, Adova. Okay. And they've been there since 2018 till then. Okay. Anyway, so look, if I'm watching this program now and um, I'm a fan, yeah, I'm thinking, why should I, why, sh why should I even take handball seriously? You know, um, uh, you know, why? 
what's, what's in your sport that, um, that should excite me if, 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 I want to be, if I want to follow you, for instance? Have you seen the pace of handball? Have you seen the speed, the agility mm. of how handball is played? Uh, if you looked at handball in the last Olympic yeah. and saw what was being played, trust me, you will want to follow handball. I will just invite those fans, yeah. come to any of our competition. We're going to be having one on the 26th of November. Okay. Come there. Just, I'm not going to say much. Mm. Uh, what you see will convince you and you probably want to remain in handball. Mm. Trust me, for those of us who played handball, handball is very addictive. Yeah. A lot of us all left football, you know, as young chaps. We all left football into handball just to try to see what is happening there and we yeah. never left. Yeah. So, trust me, it can be very addictive. I have a lot of friends who today can tell you a lot about handball. Yeah. But again, the popularity is growing steadily yeah. and we hope to get there. Okay, so let's, let's look at the money part of this, of this you know, uh, you have a league, you have run your league for this year, have you? The second phase is coming up in November. Okay, in November. So what you do now is you, 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 you take a particular location, you play all the games on, in a, for the first stage and you do the same for the second stage. Yes. That's why, because of financial reasons? Yeah, I mean, financial reasons and again, Look, let's not deceive ourselves. We have 36 states in the country. The mm. country is very big. Mm. The roads, infrastructure, road infrastructure are not that great. Mm. Uh, you can't start putting people on the road every time they home and away. Uh, even when you try to divide it into region, the region is still very big, especially mm. with the kind of money that is involved in the sport. It's not okay. much money. Uh, the prize money is not that that you want to put people on the road risking lives every mm. time. So what we do is we have the league in first and second phases where we congregate. The first phase was held in Benin. Everybody came there, played. Uh, they, we played about 11 games and we went back and uh, the second phase is going to be happening in Lagos. There's going to be another round of 11 games each by all the teams. And we have 10 uh, Premier League members in the female team and 12 mm. in the male team. I was going to ask that. Yeah. Handball is played by men and women. And I see that you have, you know, um, both leagues running, right? Where, what's your strategy here to make this become a bigger thing you know is it are your is your priority for instance the national team or your priority is the league or your priority is at the grassroots um, where where do you want to where are you driving the game from uh, the truth is when we started we told ourselves that our priority would be from the grassroots okay uh, we had a lot of aging players Mm. And we knew that for us to produce quality uh, national team players in the future, mm. we needed to go back to the grassroots and start mm. afresh. So what we did was to start uh, our underage competition, under mm. 12, under 15, under 18, 21. And then we introduced academies. Before now, before this administration, we never had academies playing in our national competitions. We only had uh, state mm. teams playing. So we wanted... Uh, players who have left, retired players, to start uh, doing stuff like coaching and what. So we, we have started allowing the academies to play, mm. right? And then, before we knew it, academies started springing everywhere. Because there are a lot of people who want to do this job, mm. but they are constrained because of the state coaches mm. or whatever, so they don't oh, have okay. that platform. Mm. So now they started uh, doing stuff on their own, in their own immediate environment. Yeah. Just look for some courts mm. that they can play on. And uh, interestingly, we've had academy win under 12, under 15, they've won now under 18, they've won 21. Now, the team that is even uh, top in the league is an academy team from the first phase. So that's to tell you... That's, that the, that's the top division? Yes, the top wow. division. Okay. So that's to tell you how far we've come. And one of the best things that happened to us was the, the uh, I mean, introducing the academy. Uh, even if you look at the female division one, the team that, is, that won it, that has now qualified, was an academy, or is an academy team. Mm. So uh, the academy teams are beginning to profilate everywhere, and we just pray that more keep coming up. Yes, mm. the issue of finance is there. Uh, some of those teams, they don't really have the finances, but the more they are producing players, mm. the more they produce players, someday all these things people will see something going on there. Okay, so what where do the schools come in here? Where the, uh, like I played handball 
um, when I was in secondary school. Back then, sports was compulsory. It was an everyday, after lunch, you had your siesta and then you played sports. Uh, today, schools don't even do sports. I mean, they do sports once a week or something like that. You know, so I imagine that a lot of them still have those facilities, the, the, the handball fields um, or courts or whatever, you know. So what exactly, uh, where exactly did they come into the picture of the schools? Ambala School is still very important for us, mm -hmm. and that's part of the grassroots program we run. Uh, if you come to the Lagos State Handballers Association, for example, mm -hmm. you see they have a tournament called the Okpai Fast Secondary School uh, Games. Mm -hmm. Whenever that tournament is holding, you have over 50 schools participating, okay. male and female over 50 schools. It's always been one of the bedrock of uh, developing talent here in Lagos and that's why Lagos has dominated a lot in terms of uh, uh, grassroots handball in recent times. Okay. Yeah. How well are we doing? In, you know, I was ahead of talking to you, I was looking through data on um, how the game works, you know, in Africa, for instance. And I see that uh, you talked about the North Africans and you talked about South Africa and all of that. But I see that it's the North Africans that completely dominate the African space, right? Um, as a matter of fact, when I saw the men's game, our best result was fourth sometime in 1991. I don't know whether that's the accurate depiction of things, but Tunisia is the best. E Egypt is next, and then you have um, Algeria. And, and, and to the point that you, to, I think you made earlier, or the point I wanted to make is that, look, sports is fundamental to progress in societies. And you'd find that in Africa, the most sort of like progressive countries are very heavy in sports, you know, whether it's football, whether it's handball, and stuff like that. So f sports is critical to our society if we want to be a progressive one. The question is, would you describe attitudes to handball, for instance, uh, or sports generally, so, because you have um, an aura as progressive enough in this country, number one, and number two, with the new administration of Shewudiko, now that we no longer have a sports um, ministry, so to speak, now we have the NSC. Uh, do, do you think, you, do you, expect changes to, to begin to happen? So, uh, I'll just trade back at you and ask, how much is the total budget, even for the Ministry of Sports? Yeah. How much was the total budget? I can assure you it's not up to 50 billion. I'm sure that I'm being very generous. That, right? That's, that's less than <laughs> $4 million. Good. Then, there's the recurrent part of that budget, hmm. which probably goes over half of that. What then is left for sports development? That should answer your question. Hmm. Every time you go to the Ministry of Sport, the then Ministry of Sport, everything you hear is there's no money. There's no money. And these are to prosecute international championships, yeah. African Cup of Nations, yeah. World Championship. It's always there is no money. So technically, we're just paying lip service to sport development in this country complete lip service. It's probably a secondary school in the United States or a university in the United States. The budget for sports is mm. way more than what to, as the a nation, country yeah. we, we are presenting. Yeah, that's what they have. But if we truly want to be a big player in the sports industry, then we need to do more. The government, they need to see sport as business. They need to see sport as a means of unity, mm -hmm. of taking people of the street. Yeah. And I, I, I just have this feeling that people still see sport as something for touts. People mm. never do well. Mm. And uh, we've not really. I, I think the attitude is beginning to change slightly, yeah. but it's slow. You know, but I get, your, I get your point exactly. You know. What I wanted to draw attention to is the correlation between um, uh, sports, a focus on sports, and the development of society, you know, and in our own case, where you have said there's very little focus on sports, we can see how, you know, crime is, you know, um, is, is high because the young people are not engaged. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you have disunity now, you know, sports generally unites us, like you said, but there's a lot of disunity and all of that. So we need to bring this back into our system, prioritize it, 
and then lead to um, growth, hopefully. But to the other question about the new structure without the ministry, and now we have the National uh, Sports Commission, do you, do you think this is um, something that will help sports develop in Nigeria, at least especially commercially? Because what I've seen of, of the new boss of the NSC is talking about business development, you know, commercial development um, um, in the sports industry. Do you, do you have a sense that this can be the case? Well, uh, I don't want to sound pessimistic, but mm. I guess I will just wait and see. Mm. Uh, Shio Diko is somebody that has an MBA, mm. and probably from a business sense perspective, he probably has it, and mm. uh, I hope that it succeeds with uh, the task that has been given to him, and I hope that the government supports him enough to yeah. succeed. Uh, but be that as it may, I would just like to wait and see. Uh, we've had the NSC before. It didn't make any significant difference to me. Uh, I don't want to see it as just a naming ceremony. We really want to give him the chance. Uh, my only advice is that uh, he needs to work together with the sports people to come up with something great. Mm -hmm. uh, it's his opportunity to deliver sport in this country, and I pray that he is able to do it. Have, have, has there been like a, a summon for the, of the Federation bosses. Like. Yeah, that, that, in my opinion, will be too early. I think it's too they early are just handing over to him today. Yeah. He's probably going to start studying the situation before he starts uh, inviting the Federation bosses. But I would advise him to work with the Federations to be able to achieve, deliver, his, goal. achieve his goals. Okay. We're going to go on a short break. It's been beautiful talking to you. We're going to go on a short break now. When we return, we're going to be talking more now about the money side. What do we need to do to bring money into handball? and to bring money into sports. You have already identified some, some parts of it. We need to be more transparent in our management. We need to be more um, sponsor focused. But you know, the bigger part of revenues in sports comes from things like broadcast media and you know, um, partnerships. You know. So we ha that's not even an area we talk about at this point in time. Everybody's focused on some sponsorship. And sponsorships in Nigeria they're usually short-term things. So you might get a sponsor this year and next year, uh, grow a bit, and the sponsor disappears, and then you fall back all, of, all to square one. You know? So how, what, what would you say is a sustainable way we can approach sports that will guarantee that we get revenue on, 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 a, regular, on a profitable basis? All right? So you, you've been watching Sports Business with Oru4 Ezaga, and the station is Plus, plus TV Africa, and we're reaching you live from our studios in Victoria Island, Lagos. We're going to go on a short break, and when we return, the business continues. You're welcome back to the program Sports Business with Oru for Ezaga. Today we're talking handball, and with me in the studio is the president of the Handball Federation of Nigeria, Mr. Samuel Ocheho, you know, he's also GM, head of um, global markets, um, Stambik IBTC. All right. Uh, so we've had an, an interesting discussion so far, trying to understand um, the workings of, of handball in Nigeria. Now we want to talk a bit more about the money in, in, in sports and how they intend to, you know, bring, bring in money to the sport in, in, in this country. Look, uh, Sami, we, we, um, I had a guest here, uh, the president of the Nigeria Tennis Federation, yeah? And he said, on this program, you know, live, he says, he's been there seven years like you. And he says, he, is not, he has not seen one cobble in seven years. And nobody has given him a cobble. So I said, are you sure what you're saying? He says, please re re quote me, reiterate it. Okay. He's not been given anything. And then he told the story about how he went to a conference and um, he met with his Moroccan com counterpart. And they were talking. And the Moroccan says, he was complaining, the Moroccan, he was bitterly that his government was not supporting tennis in Morocco, supporting tennis enough. And so he says, what do you mean? He says, they only get 3 million euros a year in Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know what to say. So tell me, do you get better support from the ministry? And if you don't, 
how do we get money into handball and sports? Ah, I was expecting that you would not talk about uh, money and the ministry, mm. but it's very, very interesting. Um, I think I became president in 2017. In 2018, we went for our first Nations Cup, I remember. Mm. I got 15 million. Everything ended with um, tickets and registration. We were in camp for nearly two months. Mm. All that was, uh, nobody cared. Even mm. the jerseys we were going to use, nobody cared. That's the first time. Yeah. Second time again was all African Games qualifiers. Okay. That's the time we got another 15 million, which ended in tickets and registration. Yeah. The third time was when we went to Cameroon for the female Nations Cup. I think we got about 30. That's all. Mind you, we've gone for, since I came into uh, the presidency, we've gone for four Nations Cup. Mm. We've gone for three World Championships. We've gone for numerous IHF Trophy competition. Yeah, I, uh, for IHF Trophy, uh, IHF pays for your ticket and registration. So that that's the international that handbook. Yeah, yeah, that reduces your burden. Okay. But all the camping, everything, if we've not gone, we've gone for over 10. So right? how do you finance those? So that's, a, that's just to show you the level of support mm. we've gotten from the ministry. Mm. Uh, for me, I, I've just taken it that I think these guys have just played the mickey at all times because it is a constant no money, no money. We're not telling them to come and support our local championships. That's our job. But when people are going to represent the country, I think it only makes sense for the ministry to support, no matter how small. But clearly, it all, it's, it's all about the focus again. Mm. It shows how much they care about your representation in those international championships. But I can't remember football ever missing any of any of this. No, you'd be surprised. Even <laughs> football has problems. No, I'm not saying they don't have problems. Yeah. But I cannot remember missing Nigeria missing any Nations Cup they qualified. No, you can't. For. Not, not, to, not to no, the either under seventeen, mm. under twenty. Mm. I can't remember. But trust me, we've gone to three World Cups, no single cup, three World Championship, no single cup. That's to tell you how we've been able to run handball. And yeah, where did the money come from? Money came from friends. Money came from some small corporates. Money came from personal pockets. I know to prosecute all this championship. Yeah. Um, yeah, a lot of people will say, why do you have to put your own money sometimes into these things? Or why do you have to, if the government is not interested, let it be. I hear them, and they are right by what they say. But in years to come, everybody will say, Sam, you were in the saddle between the years of 2017 and mm. 2024 or 2025. Mm. What did you do? Nobody will remember that the ministry did not support you. For your own name, in order to succeed, I mean, for me, whenever I handle it, it's just like where the Bible says, if you handle the plow, do not look back, right? Mm. If I handle a job, I want to make success of that job. Mm. You know, that's how we've gotten to where we've yeah. gotten so far. Is that the most ideal? It's probably not the most ideal. We... The corporate world, like we were talking about the other time, still needs to get more involved yes, well. in, in, in sport, in ensuring that we take uh, children out of the street. We've had children from this same sport who are now professionals, who before now, if you look at their background, was nobody. But today, they are playing the sports in a professional basis, earning for themselves, feeding their families and uh, extended families. I, I guess it can be a source of employment for a lot of people, the government just needs to understand this more and do something more for sports. Okay, so it's a good thing that you have made this point because here's where I want to go back to a point that we talked about and I said I was going to come back to that and that's corporates getting into sports. I understand the, the, I, the whole point of getting in because of eyeballs, you know, because of um, what it does for your, your brand picture and all of that, all of that's fine. But the point is, if I'm managing a business, right, I would imagine that I'll look at my operating environment as the, as the goose that lays the golden egg. Now, if we trash that goose and we kill it, 
we stop getting the golden eggs, right? Yeah. So if you're a corporate organization, for instance, and you don't put money in sports because you think the eyeballs are not there, there's a different way you're going to spend that money. Those young people that should be playing sports are not playing sports. They're, they're vandalizing your, your properties. They're stealing from you. They're kidnapping your workers and you're paying money. Do you understand? So when you're not spending in sports, you're probably spending more of that you know that means in, in other elements trying to you know so don't just see value from the point of view of how many people attended see value as from the point of view of cleaning society up so that your business can, can yeah. thrive do you understand uh, so that's something that our corporates need, need to take into account in north america for instance there's this unfortunately i, I you know i would have brought it up on, uh, but i've showed this slide a few times 70% of every sponsorship, every dollar spent on sponsorship goes to sports. 70%. It just shows you how sports is critical, how critical sports is to our progressive civilizations. Do you understand? It's very important that you do that to build the kind of society that we're looking at. But other than Andover, let's come back. Uh, other than and Adova, sorry. Uh, have you had any other sponsor? that has been um that has been committed to you guys i like to talk about these people that are supporting the domestic industry let's give them as much mileage as possible that's number one and then number two do you have any plans to go into like um the broadcast space because that's where real money is but to do that you have to really then win uh fans who are really fans and then create a few stars in the game that fans want to see play and all of that do you do you do you think that's a potential sh <coughs> short, mid, or long-term um, project? Uh, yeah, uh, we've had the Sokoto State Government sponsor under twelve, under fifteen. Hmm. They sponsored it for four years. Yeah, okay. four years. The Sokoto State Government. Yes, okay. and um, for that straight four years, we we're just playing the game of handball in Sokoto oh, that's at that level. Hmm. Uh, we had the Edo State sponsor uh, Division One League. Okay. Um, that ended actually this year. Uh, we're still going to go back to them again to see if uh, they can when, probably when the new government comes in yeah. to see if they can continue or not. Uh, we've had few corporates like uh, Days Investment, like Crosk Investment, all sponsoring part of our program. Not as the main sponsor, mm. but as a spice side sponsors that have helped us even z crest we've had them come in to sponsor uh who is z crest one of this the uh, capital market outfits you know as i hear you call these names right yeah. i hear you call the smaller players i want to hear you call mtn or glow or 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 the big banks even your bank you know because these are the guys who have the resources and see when it comes to this, I'm, I'm a bit, um, you know, I'm a bit anti, not anti, I, 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 I give heavy stick to the corporate sector because I think that they don't understand sports enough, you know, and they need to put in more uh, into sports for their own good, do you understand? And if it comes to uh, visibility, every time a handball player is playing, your, your brand is there, the people can see you, it depends on how you use social media, you can be in everybody's face, you know, but to do these things even, you need money. You know, bring in the money and dictate the terms you want. I yeah. don't mind, but don't, you know. I, I see, I would not doubt it. Uh, I'm not uh, even trying to fault what you're saying. I think the corporates, the, especially the big corporates, mm. even the large local corporates, they needs to get to do more for mm. sport. We should, I mean, a lot of them are socially responsible, mm. but probably not the other sectors. They, they need to start looking at sport as a very good ground yeah. uh, for development of the youth. Mm. Uh, so we all love when we see those stars abroad. Mm. If, the, if the country did not invest in sport development, we wouldn't uh, be able to see those stars. We can produce our own stars in this country. And there's still so much that can be done. The truth is, when you look at Nigeria, there are just no infrastructures for sport. How many, okay. how many states can you go to in this across Nigeria and get a good indoor court, proper indoor hall that caters for handball, basketball, and a proper one? 
maybe with uh, four to five thousand seater capacity, mm. you probably will find none. Maybe in Abuja, you just find, or uh, maybe in Kaduna, but there's just none. So how would sport develop? Right. Well, here's the, here's the counter picture to okay. that. If I'm in government, I say to you that look, I've got stadiums. For instance, if it's football we're talking about, let's say top football, I've got stadiums all over the place. A lot of them are dilapidated. Yeah. The fans, even the ones that are good, we don't see the fans. So I'm saying, look, show me why I should put government's money in this. So you still essentially need the right products, you know, uh, before. If the government wakes up and sees that the stadiums are packed, then they say, okay, yeah, let's, this, is, this is commerce, this is engagement, let's put in some money. So when Lagos... Do you build the infrastructure before you get there? When engagement? Lagos used to be packed, mm. what happened? When? Lagos, the national stadium yeah. in Lagos. In those days, Lagos, uh, the national stadium used to be very packed, mm. right? Where is that stadium today? Because <laughs> globalization, so about globalization happened. Yes. Yeah? Cable TV became um, ubiquitous, and we were not ready for that. So the fans moved s somewhere else, and now we're all suffering. So it's still about us being ready to do what we need to do. Do, yeah. <laughs> I mean, because the globalization is here to stay. Mm. It's not going to end. Mm. There are going to be a lot more things that will be done to make this... Uh, uh, everybody access, everybody have everybody. access yeah. to this sporting event mm. on your phone, just in, in the very comfort of your homes. Mm. In the developed world, you still see, uh, despite having access, people still go to the stadium. Well, we need to create that enabling environment. That yeah. has to be done. Whatever needs to be done. Yeah, it needs to needs be to done, done to make that happen. Because we cannot say because of globalization, mm people can no longer go to the stadium. Mm. Every day the English Premier League is packed full. That's why we stay at home and watch it, right? Mm. So it still goes about, we need, we need to tap that whole thing about the media and broadcasting, mm. right? Uh, I think we're still very poor mm. with tapping into that as a sport in this country. It's not just about handball. Mm. I think generally we're still very poor in that aspect and it's something we all need to look at how we can unhead the value mm. that are, can come from media and broadcasting rights. Have you, in, in the context of the sexes, uh, where do you think there's more, more poten potential or um, yeah, more potential for handball. Is it is it is it the female teams or, or the male teams? If you ask me the potential in terms of trophy potential, yeah. trust me, it's the female team that can quickly give you a trophy. Yeah. The male yeah. team is more competitive. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, the male team is packed. That probably attracts more people and all. But in terms of getting you yourself quick trophy, quick wins, probably would be with the female. But even that, you know, I actually have a slide. I hope my director can put it up. It's um, a picture in Africa, you know, where, um, aha, that's the, the African Women's ha Handball um, Championship. Angola, they are completely dominant, Angola. Whereas in the men's side of things, it's the North Africans. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe it's because of um, cultural um, attitudes. What, what, what do you say? In, in most successful team in Africa can mm. right now is Egypt. <laughs> in recent <laughs> times, time, yeah. Egypt has totally dominated handball mm. in, from the under age 17, youth, junior, and senior. Egypt is seriously dominating mm. now. Um, but North Africans, they've just started developing their female handball yeah. team and they are already picking up gradually. That's why you see Angola has dominated forever. But right. why is Angola dominating when we are there? Nigeria, oh, they've, they've invested. Been. Yeah? They've invested. In female handball? Yes, they've invested in female handball. They go for tours, they go, I mean, they are close to Portugal, they, they, they go to all these places to play handball, they've gone to European tours, they've played up to the Olympics, they've played everything about Female handball and the government is supporting them significantly. Yeah, 
while we were sleeping, other countries were busy doing what they needed to. Mm -hmm. Once upon a time, Nigeria was up there in mm -hmm. terms of female handball. But we slept, and other countries took over. Now we are struggling to get back to what we used to have then. And I dread next year coming, because listening to you talk, right, I, I can feel that you, you, you want this thing to happen, yeah. But next year is coming, and you probably have to leave the, the, the saddle, yeah. So my point is, if there is no change in policy, have you groomed your successor? Well, <laughs> interesting, in, in, interesting point. But there's no need to fear. Uh, like I always tell people, if Jesus did not go, the Holy Spirit will not come. <laughs> so there will always be the Holy Spirit that will come <laughs> and take over. Somebody needs to leave or somebody has to come and do the yeah, work. Yeah. And sometimes you're afraid of uh, change. Mm. But when the next person comes, the person probably does better. I'm sure people were also afraid that when I was taking over, I might mm. not uh, mm. do much. But again, somebody took over. Somebody, somebody will always be there. There are people already, uh, there are people already campaigning to take over the jobs. So. Yeah. Do you have any? Um, you, you know, one of the biggest problems with domestic sports is the leadership in fight, the squabbles, right? It's ripping sports apart, and it, it's so bad right now that one leadership is there, the guys that lose out are spending all of their time trying to get you to fail. And then maybe they get in and some other, you know, so it's, we're caught in this vicious cycle of, vicious cycle. of what I, the Germans call schadenfreude. You know, everybody, you know, we're looking just to celebrate the failure of the, the, of the do you have that in, in handball for <laughs> Uh, I would lie if I say it does not exist. Okay. It surely does exist. And mm -hmm. uh, we're managing it every day. <laughs> we can see how it's going. I mean, you, you're there trying to do good things, and all people see is they, they just want to see your failures. They want to celebrate your failure. Yeah. That is uh, happening. But that has not distracted us. We yeah. remain focused. And um, at the end of the day, the jury will be out there for everyone to see. see. What do you think is going to be your role post your presidential position? Well, I'll come back to my home here in Lagos, mm. focus on developing children through okay. raising my own academies. Yeah. Oh, you, you have an academy? I have an academy and okay. I'm going to just focus on it. Yeah. Uh, it has suffered for now, mm. but it's going to be a place for developing young kids and mm. young talent and uh, I look forward to doing that yeah um well it's been fantastic you know having you on the on the program we we um are bringing this home now you know um so basically i think if you, if you had to speak about the general sports picture in nigeria right you work in a, a big organization you know um Sometimes, I think in Africa, we tend to think, oh, you go and build a fantastic product and come and meet us. But, you know, it happens differently um, overseas, you know, because for, for two reasons. Number one, culturally, from when you're very young, from when you're two, three years old, you're already integrated into sports as a part of your, of, of your way of doing things, mm. of, of your life, of a, you know. So you grow up in your little communities, you already have your clubs that you support and all of that. And, you know, we don't have that in Nigeria. So uh, there's no growing up in Luton, for instance, and saying Luton Town is my club. And they don't care anything about Real Madrid or Barcelona or any other club in the world. Not even clubs in the UK. They follow their local uh, clubs. We don't have that, those in, in this country. How do we develop that culture? Because for me, that's the biggest challenge we face. That culture of integrating sport into our civilization that then blossoms into all of us supporting the industry and, and then growing um, growing um, along along with it you, you know so how do you think we can achieve that you know I might not be the greatest expert here, hmm. but I believe that every club that has this followership hmm does something from that community. Yeah. And 
when people see what you're doing for that community, mm. there's a natural court followership, mm. right? Everybody see you as the club. The players, the stars at that club, do also go through a community service. Yeah, stop. the children okay. of the community also play in so the club the, and and the, yeah, the children play. The parents the work there and all. So it's it's just a natural, which is why you begin to wonder. A team is going on relegation; they still have all the kind of yes, worship yeah. there. Mm. Whether they go from Premier League to League Four or whatever, yeah, that full worship is remains. Yeah, steady. Ah, oh, I don't know what we have to do, but it's a lo we're a long way from there mm. as a country. We are a long way. And um, even the clubs we have in our community, what impact are they making mm. in that area? Okay, we're going to um, wrap it here. Uh, it's been a very interesting um, one hour. And um, I, wish, I wish you more success you know uh, with handball going forward is there anything you you want to just quickly say you know 30 seconds one minute you can maybe we skipped it um you can say and then no i think we've had a robust round of discussion mm. uh if i'm going to say anything is i will just want to invite the big names mm. our uh, local corporate the big local corporate mm. in this country that there's something going on in handball they should bring their money and invest in handball okay thank you yeah thank you for for making the program and to you um, um viewers it's been it's been nice having you watch this and um we we on this program we preach you know uh, the 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 fact that domestic sport is is fundamental to to the progress of societies all right so if we're not taking sports seriously in this country, then we have to start grappling with problems like, like um, insecurity, um, divisions uh, among our peoples and all of that, you know, and you know, that, that is not the kind of environment businesses want to do to thrive, businesses can thrive in. So if you are a corporate organization watching this program or if you are a representative of a corporate organization watching this don't think that sports value is only when you have eyeballs or when the stadium is full engage the young people of this country let them be doing productive things and then society cleans up and then you're you're safer your 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 property is not vandalized your, your staff are not kidnapped and all of that and then you can op operate and thrive in that kind of sanity all right um so next week we'll be bringing another exciting package uh, and until we do here's me wishing you a fantastic week uh, be productive be good and stay safe